So non-farm payrolls, right? It sounds really funny. It sounds a little interesting. You're wondering why it's named for something it's not. Well, let's dig into it, right? Here are the keys to trading around non-farm payroll data release. Now, important reminder that trading investing can be extremely risky business. Therefore, it's your responsibility to evaluate any information, opinion advice, or other content contained in this video. So let's get into it. You remember when you learned earlier in school years who, what, when, where, why, how, and kind of helped you remember concepts and, you know, big uh, picture pieces of history and things like that? Well, we're going to bring that concept in here. So let's start with who. The non-farm payroll data is measured by the Bureau of Labor Statistics and is released by the U.S. Department of Labor. Now, what is it measuring? It's the most important thing. It's the number of new jobs created in the last month. So we're looking for increases and sometimes they're decreases in this number. Jobs created versus jobs lost. Now, the important thing here is this is unique data because it's named for what it doesn't include. The biggest piece being the farm employees, farm workers. But it also does not include some government workers. It does not include employees in private households. It does not include sole proprietors or self-employed workers. And it doesn't include nonprofit employees. So you might be wondering, well, why are we leaving all these wonderful people out? Well, because the included workers in the non-farm payroll data number make up 80% of the U.S. business sectors that contribute to the GDP. Now, the GDP is the gross domestic product. That's essentially a measure of the output and productivity of the U.S. So that's why this number is so valuable, even though it leaves out those other groups. Moving along, when? When is this important? When does this data come out? It is, like clockwork, the first Friday of every month. Now, depending on when the first of the month falls, this might actually be the second Friday technically. But it's the first Friday after a full week of the month generally, and you can find these dates at any time. It's not a mystery, guys. And it's not like earnings, okay? Earnings dates get kind of like whispered and you know you don't know if the report's actually gonna come out that day. This is pretty fixed. So you can plan and be ready for it in your trading. And the time of the report is 8.30 a.m. Eastern. So it doesn't matter where you are in the world, 8.30 a.m. Eastern, New York time, that's when this report is going to be released. Now, why is it important to pay attention to? It is an indicator of economic growth versus deterioration in the U.S. Essentially, the larger that number, okay, the more jobs we're creating over time, it's interpreted as the economy growing and expanding. But if that number of jobs being created is getting smaller, right? If you're making less of a good thing, that's interpreted as slowdown or could be deterioration. And this is especially important when you're on the cusp of changing between sort of normal good times and maybe a recession, or even more important, if you're in a recession and worried about a depression, okay? These numbers are gonna kind of help you be ready for that. So this is what the economic information is that goes into non-farm payroll. How do you use it in your trading? I've got five points for you here that are really important to consider. The first two are related, but it really depends on what kind of news we're about to get. So if you're expecting good news, okay, if the rumors going into that first Friday are that the job number's looking good, meaning we're looking at a larger increase than what was estimated from the prior month, then what you need to watch for in your trading is watch for buying the rumor, watch for market strength into the date of the release, and then be prepared for the possibility of selling on the news release. Okay, this is not a hard and fast rule. This is not a trading rule on its own, but it's an extremely helpful guideline. On the flip side, if we're expecting bad news, if you're coming into a month where you are seeing that the economists are expecting the jobs number to shrink and there to be less new jobs created last month than the prior month, then watch for selling on the rumor. Watch for weakness potentially leading into that report date and then watch for buying once the news comes out. So this is just a general guideline, but it happens often enough that it's really valuable to look at. Next, remember, you don't have to trade at the time of the news. Shocker, I know. So those of you who are day traders, you might feel like, well, I gotta trade every minute of every day in order to reach my goals. You should only be trading if you can handle the volatility. Now this ties to your instrument. Not every market is going to have some giant reaction to the jobs data. But if you're trading a broad market index, say the E-mini S&P, my baby, E-mini NASDAQ, or anything in that category where it's relating to the broad stock market of the US, 
Or if you're trading, let's say, interest rate sensitive interest instruments, because the Fed, the FOMC committee, they pay close attention to these numbers, then you might get caught up in a lot of volatility. So you really should pay attention to the sensitivity of your instruments that you're trading and how they react to the jobs data to be best prepared. Last but not least, follow your trading plan and follow your risk reward parameters. Okay. Even though this data may create what seems like abnormal movements and spikes, when you study them after the fact, like I have for over 20 years, you start to notice that even though moves may be exaggerated, they still respect support and resistance. They still have GAN drives and forecast abilities and all that good stuff behind them. It just can happen very fast and have a lot of wild swings to it. So if you're going to embark on trading anywhere near the time that this data is being released, remember these five points. It's going to be really helpful to you to navigate, especially when those pieces of data come out and they are followed by really volatile market movements. All right. Remember to subscribe, like, comment down below and follow, and I'll catch you on the inside. You can sign up at the link to get my hot, timely, actionable updates as soon as I publish right to your inbox.